So last time we met, we started talking about multi-stage experiments. Um, we started talking about the fact that these are um, sort of compound experiments where we are two having two separate um, outcome options happen. Um, and the last one that we had done was an example with two children being born to a family. I think it was Joe was the one talking about it, yeah. And how the, just because there's really only three outcomes, because of the ordering of the birth, there's actually four outcomes. So it's not a one-third probability. It's actually a one-fourth probability of having, in this case, two boys. All right, so we're going to actually do another example. Um, so this is... Um, this is my real life example. So how many of you are familiar with a disease called Huntington's disease? Anybody? Huntington's disease is um, a little bit similar to Parkinson's. It's a little more popular, like well known anyway. Um, it affects your central nervous system and it shuts down your, uh, your body's ability to react to stimuli appropriately. So it slows down response times in particular. So like the time it takes your head to tell your foot to stop on the brake is not long enough before you hit the car in front of you kind of stuff. Okay, and what it is is it's your body overproducing a, I'm not a science person, so this is probably not all correct, but it's a basic idea, overproducing um, an enzyme or a chemical or a something in your brain that gets in the way of those, those um, responses happening. That's what it actually is. So um, Huntington's disease is a disease that my grandmother had um, and then also my father. Um, so in 2001, my parents decided to tell us this. So in 2001, I'd been married for almost three years. My sister had been married for almost a year, and my brother was dating the woman that he did end up marrying about two years after that or whatever it was. I don't even know. He was young at the time, but yeah. So they had this big family meeting at Thanksgiving. Yeah. And said, hey, by the way, we have this disease that runs in our family. And not only that, but we've known about it for a number of years, and we haven't told you. And um, that was very infuriating uh, because the way that the disease works is that if my father had it, which he did, then I have a 50% chance of having it. Flat out. That's just it. That's right. You, don't, you inherit it much like her inheriting your gender from your dad, boy, girl. You don't necessarily inherit this from your dad, but from either parent who has it. And um, we were actually living in Kansas at the time, and we were at home visiting. And so my husband and I were there. And they knew about this well in advance of my husband marrying me. And I felt like that they should have told us before we got married. But they didn't. Um, the reason that they didn't is because um, there's not really anything that at the time could be done. There's, and there still is no um, for sure cure or anything like that. They're still working on things and they have some progress in certain areas. Um, but the reason that they went ahead and told us is because using in vitro fertilization... What you can actually do at that time and then now as well is that you can create the embryo and once they get to eight cells big, you can test the DNA on the embryo and you can tell from eight cells big if that embryo, that baby, has the Huntington gene, which is pretty amazing scientifically speaking, no doubt. And then the idea is that once you've done that, you could choose to implant only the embryo that, have, that don't have the disease. So my husband and I, with that information, looked at each other and said, not going to do that. That's just too close to playing God. We're not going to do it. And so we decided right then, that night, at my parents' house, that if I had the Huntington gene if I, that I would be tested for, and if I had it, that we were not having children, flat out. Um, it's not a popular decision with my family. Um, because my mom looked at that and said, well, if we had decided that, we wouldn't have had you and your brother and your sister. And we're like, you know, I get that, but we're looking at it from moving forward, not looking at it from backwards and children that already exist. Um, they also had sort of this disclaimer of, well, but if you adopt kids, they might also have some sort of, you know, problem that you're not aware of. And uh, my kids do <laughs> have some problems that we couldn't have been aware of. Um, but ours was all about this issue of what to do with this particular situation. So um, we're going to create a tree diagram that shows um, what this looks like for my family, knowing this information. And while I didn't sit there in bed that night and draw a tree diagram, I did do the mathematics that the tree diagram does as we sort of processed this information. So I'm going to work this out with you first. So I'm the oldest, so I'm the first branch of the tree. Okay, so we're going to go in sibling order. So this is me. <clears throat> 
And there's two options. I either have it or I don't. And with Huntington's, it's 50-50. So it's just like the diagram that we did over here with my boys and girls. You can do one-halves or 0.5s. I'm gonna do 0.5s just because I did one-halves in the last one in fractional form just for a variation, okay? Um, my sister is 17 months younger than I am, so she's branch number two. So she either has it or she doesn't. So I'm gonna write have and don't. And again, 50-50 shot for her. Whoops, I said I was doing 0.5s. Let's keep going with that. And then my brother is the third child. And again, he either has it or he doesn't. So have, don't. And they're all 0.5s. So the first question on the next page that what you see is what is actually the, the math I did in my mind that night. This is the question I thought about. What is the probability that at least one of the three of us has this disease? Because, I mean, like, it's fine if I do or if I don't, but what about everybody else too? How does this affect my family at large? So if you take a look at the branches where at least one of us doesn't have it, there's a lot of them, right? How many of the branches actually have at least one of us not having it? Can you tell? All but one. So this is the only one that you noticed, Michaela, that says that we all three don't have it, right? Where we're all in the clear. So this is one of those ones where it's easier to actually do the problem where we do the probability that one of us, that one doesn't, is one minus the probability that we all do. Um, one, what did I say? I totally wrote that wrong. One does have it, that's what I wanted. And the probability that we all, oh, this is what happens when you start to erase. At least one of us does minus the probability that we all don't. That's what I meant to do. Okay, so here's one minus. Oh my word. Excuse me. All right, so if you take a look at the branch where we all don't have it, there's 0.5s on each part of the branch, and there's three branches for the three of us kids, right? So we would have 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. So what is 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5? You may know it. It's one eighth as a fraction, yeah. It's 0.125 as a decimal. You can totally do this problem in fractions if you want to. Um, what's one minus 1, 0.125? Yeah, 0.875, or if you were doing this with fractions, it'd be seven over eight. That's the number I was thinking in my mind that night. So there is an 87.5% chance that my family deals with this in the next generation one of the three of us at least, right? That's huge. I mean, like, if those were the odds that you bet you would win the lottery, you'd bet. All of you would. Those are good odds, but they're not, right? Because it's a disease that runs in the family. So my husband and I made the decision, like I told you, that if I had this disease, we absolutely would not be having children. We've been married for almost three years at the time, and um, we, I was still in grad school, um, so we weren't like on the cusp of you know, having children immediately. So we waited a couple of more years and um, went ahead and had the genetic testing done. 
Um, so that genetic testing is a blood test that takes several vials of blood, and there's like psychological testing that goes along with it and all this kind of stuff. Um, Huntington's is a very psychologically debilitating disease for people who know that they're about to develop it. Um, there have been um, there have been episodes about Huntington's on a lot of the doctor shows. So if you watch any of things like um, Oh, which one was it? Like Grey's Anatomy, stuff like that. Back in, the, I mean, there's been different ones. The Practice was one. There have been episodes where they've talked about that. There was a show on Oprah a number of years ago where a mother um, was uh, died from it, and uh, well, her, her a lady's mother died from Huntington's disease, and she had two children. And the whole episode was about this woman and her processing all of that information. Um, these stories don't end up going very well. Um, that particular story, the mom who nursed her mother through the disease, took her own life and killed both of her children, or at least attempted to. Um, they tested the children. One child died and one didn't. Um, she actually killed the child that didn't have the disease and the one that survived did. Not that that makes it any better, but it just makes it even maybe more tragic. Um, so there's just really absolutely horrible stories surrounding this disease. It's awful. Um, and it's a very slow progressing disease. So my father was sick for like noticeably six for probably five or six years where he just progressively got worse. Um, so the things that I specifically remember are like my grandma not being able to stop the ice cream dispenser thing at a, like a golden corral, you know, where you can do the self-serve ice cream and there's ice cream everywhere, um, stuff like that. Um, my dad, in order to compensate on his balance, would hunch over so he looked like, you know, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Like that's what my son remembered and my little son remembered about my dad mostly is how he walked. Um, so that... Uh, it was in, I started the testing in August, and the testing results happened apparently also right at Thanksgiving. I got my results back, and I do not have Huntington's disease. But during that two-year time period of knowing that this was sort of out there and processing what we wanted to do about it, my husband and I had made the decision. We made it that night, but we became more convinced for, for sure that our family would include adoption. Um, and during that two years, it became very obvious that regardless of how that test came out, adoption was going to be part of our story. So um, Huntington's disease is the reason that I have my, my daughter and my son, the two first two that I had. So um, we filed paperwork to adopt, um, but not after. Once I got tested and I was good to go, um, it was a couple of years later um, that we decided we were ready and we had Abby. Um, and then two years after that or thereabouts, we filed for adoption and um, we have Eli. Um, and Eli has led to us adopting Temeskin and Lelise, um, which I swore, why would you? I probably did. I probably even swore to God, like, that's not you're something you're supposed to do. Like, that's totally not okay, right? But I probably did. I will never adopt teenagers, right? Like, that sounds like a pretty solid thing to say, right? And then I did. And um, I think it's interesting. Um, how God uses those really horrible, scary things in our lives um, to bring about really good stuff. And um, I don't know how the results of what's going on today um, are going to affect my family or how the results of things that are going on in your life are going to affect you. Um, but I have to look at where we are right now um, with my older two kids. Some of you know them, um, and some of you know them very well, to Mexican and Lise, um, and they wouldn't be here. They just would not be here if Huntington's were not part of my history. Um, my brother and my sister have still not been tested. Um, my sister has three children. My brother has two. So they would all be considered at risk for having this disease. Um, my brother and sister are getting old enough, or at least close to old enough, that they could be showing symptoms in the next few years. Um, this is one of those funny statistical things. So um, your age of onset for this disease... Um, has a mean of the same age that your your parent had it. So my dad's onset was probably around 45 or so, 50, I don't know, somewhere in there. But it has a standard deviation, and we'll talk more about means and standard deviations in Chapter 10, but it has a standard deviation of 18 years. So it means that plus or minus 18 years is your expectation. It's a pretty big standard deviation. <laughs> so some people don't have any knowledge of having the disease until they're very old. I mean, right? Um, they may be in their 80s before they even have knowledge that they had it. 
and there is childhood onset as well. And there was a, a woman at our church, um, actually, my church that I was growing up, um, and I knew her. Um, actually, I knew her mom. Her daughter, the daughter was actually a little younger than me, and she had childhood onset. So childhood usually means young, young. So she was in her 20s when she had onset of the disease and ended up having to be in a facility and everything. So I do not have the disease, but my brother and my sister still are in the gray area. So given the fact that I don't have Huntington disease, what is the probability that at least one of my siblings does? Well, if you take a look back over here at this diagram, what this actually does is it actually lets us know that this top half isn't part of the scenario anymore, right? That genetic test eliminated that possibility because I don't have the disease, which means that this is now our reality. There's a 50-50 shot that my sister has it, followed by the 50-50 shots that my brother does. <clears throat> so if you look at the same question that I asked myself that night, and you wanted to know what the probability is that at least one of them has it, right? So the probability that at least one does, it's still easiest to do one minus, oops, one minus the probability that both don't. And on the tree diagram over here, that's still that bottom red branch. It's just that I only have 0.5 twice now. So I have one minus 0.5 times 0.5, which is one minus what? Mm-hmm, 0.25. So there is still a 75% chance that one of my siblings has it. And if they do, 50-50 shot for each kid, right? <clears throat>